introduced to participating with your friends and then what are the potential dangers there and then I guess stemming off that do you just put do yeah so I'm just thinking time conscious <laughs> yeah mate potential um, dangers yeah so there's personal development I put in wealth creation. Oh. Something like that in year 12. Okay. Yeah, hospitality, you know. Right, the kids want to know what they're doing. At a junior level, it's really actually, you know, three stories like this, it's full of gorgeous people and food. Girls always want to get the hats. And the hats, you know. And I say, what is it about designing a hat? So, you know, oh wow. A whole host of our cases, visual, lovely. The kids all get one, they're not allowed to open them. This is after we've taught some theory, we play the game. They've got to guess what sexually transmitted disease is in the box or what disease is in the box. So this one is hepatitis. They, they choose the right one, they can tell us some information about it, they win a prize. If they don't know any information about it but someone else in the group can tell us some information, they get the prize. And they might be tokens that add up, so at the end of the month, we reward them with how many tokens they've got. 20 tokens, you get a bit of a canteen voucher. You know, 10 tokens, you get a chocolate bar, that type of thing. But the fact we don't give it to them as an assignment, this one here is about vasectomy, it's about the contraception. So not only is this a literacy task, learning new words, learning what they mean, we're doing it in PDS in terms of uh, a unit two where it's looking at health and community service type uh, notion. They're talking, so again, they're doing their oral um, work under the literacy, the oral literacy component. But the best thing, the kids love the fact that they come in a case and they're all bright and happy and they do the task. And they get rewarded at the end. Again, we could have given them an assignment that said, can you pick out uh, four different contraceptive methods and write some information for me? They wouldn't do it. Or it would be just so cut and paste from the internet, there was no learning involved. But here they get to talk about it. Great ways of learning. Okay, this is our next speed event. On your tables, and you might want to choose where you, you, you change to, how do we then go and develop programs? On this um, sheet, it has on it about your activity. Different tables have got different activities. I want you to have a bit of a play with the activity, and then I want you to try and come up with three different things you could investigate from that activity. What VCAL strands it might touch on, um, what evidence, do you think three pieces of evidence you could collect? Does any of it involve employability skills? What resources might you need and any other comments you might want to make? And I'm going to run through them. We use DSs a lot in the classroom. Um, again, you know, funded by outside generous people. Find some philanthropists in your area and explain to them about it, about how these kids, what well, most of the kids don't have a lot of this stuff, but we use it all on brain training, brain training, site training, um, all those things, and it's about getting them focused for a class. But there's lots of other learning that can take place. You get some of the ones that are um, Pandora's box where you have to keep problem solving all the way through to get to the next level. If I gave the kids the same problem solving um, example on a piece of paper, they wouldn't do it. But because it's on a DS, they do. So there's some DSs here, just have to switch them on on the side and have a bit of a play. There's games already loaded. This one here is one of the biggest gambling games in the um, at, in Southeast Asia, and uh, it's sick by it's at our casino. It can really get near a table, and it's all about um, placing a, a bet on one of these coming up, rolling the three dice, looking at the total, and then winning money according to the odds. So I'll come and help you with this if you want to do this one. Down here is a book that I think is the most fabulous integrated uh, learning book, If the World Were a Village. This was um, created by David Smith in response to a young person saying, I don't know what language to do, whether I should do French or Spanish. And it started off this investigation about um, where
where which language is spoken most in the world. And then they started to look at the world as a whole picture and said, what would happen if the world was only 100 people? And it goes through everything. When this book was first published, I think it was about 1993, there was um, four mobile phones in this village. Today, and he upstates it every year, today there is something like 57 mobile phones. So the tasks in this are just amazing in what you can do in a teaching sense. This one down here, this game's fantastic, so if you want to change tables or move around, this one's called Distractor Match. It's a road safety game, and it's about being able to match the shapes but not the colours. So you, under a time frame, you will find I can put this one on here because it's not yellow, but you can only use each colour once on the board. And you've got to do it before the egg timer runs out, and it's not that easy. Because once you do it just playing around, then you do it with someone talking to you asking you questions, like what did you have for dinner, where are you going for your holidays. The whole purpose of this is about when young people are learning how to drive, how you have someone chatting to you is a real distraction and you can't stay focused. And it's a, it's a fantastic game and activity and leads on to heaps of other different activities there. Down here is a book called The Simple Gift. It's one of my favourite stories about a boy who runs away from an alcoholic father and finds this new life. It's in Free Prose by Stephen Herring. Kids who have never read a book in their life read this. They absolutely love it. And the amount of tasks we find in this, tasks for numeracy, literacy, work-related skills and personal development. And you only have to read little bits of it. And I'm waiting for a film to come out because it's a beautiful book. Do you use it? Yeah, we use it. It's a great, a great yeah, book. Yeah, yeah, and we use it with our intermediates. And this one down here, is about masks. Often when uh, the kids are really ratty, I will bring out something and I will say to them whether it's a mask or one of the cars, and I'd say, can, here's a mask, here's some textures. Can you tell me about how you are today? Let me know where you're at. It's my way of trying to understand them a bit better. So to have things like this on hand leads into a whole lot of other things. So, six tables of activities. Choose whatever one you'd like. Most often. And then it's about the combination. So we say to the kids, put down a bet so they all get some gambling money. And they might put something here and, you know, something up like here and, you know, go, oh, yeah, I reckon triple four is going to come up. And then they roll the dice and they see it's five, six and two. And we talk about where are the winners on this. That's uh, 11, that's 13. Beautiful. So we've actually won here. I've won eight. Very rare. But this is gone because we didn't get a triple. This one here is a one and a six. We didn't get a one and a six, so you've lost that one, but you've won eight here. And they've three to start. Well, well I, I, give, I give them like a, a block of money. It's got to last the whole lesson. If they run out of money, they're cleaning the floor or washing the windows. They have a task. They know. If they've gambled irresponsibly, they all end up cleaning the room because as it goes on, they see that the winner is the casino. Mm. You know, it's not that easy to win on this, but we do a lot of preparation work before this about how the odds work and, you know, the way people note things down and try and make so in predictions. A, in effect, it could be a tool that tells kids that maybe gambling isn't going to oh, be the this best This is thing. all part of our responsible gambling unit and it's all about, there's a whole host of things I do in this, but it's all about showing that you are not the winner. Gambling is a thing of luck. So you've mapped all that onto the palette, you're boring, you know, obviously. <coughs> um, most of my stuff has come from the Responsible Gambling book. Have you seen the one from Consumer Affairs? It's a free book. Yeah, you were talking this morning about it. So we, we've used that and adapted things out of that to be all activity based. But like as you said, you do an activity and then you say, well, yeah, yeah, that's what this, we've this, done. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. We could tell like, you know, the maths side of it. Yeah. 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 Right down to even, you know, talking about why casinos are always dark inside. And it's lovely when you do it with the senior level because most of them turn 18. We actually can go through the casino oh, and we show what them. What an excursion. Yeah, what an excursion. It's not like spend any money, but you need to see that whole yeah. environment. Environment. You know, it's quite mesmerising. Yeah. So, but there's lots of activities you could do with that. Yeah.